Sage. I have family ancestors that fought for independence and ancestors that were here long before the war. And I love learning about them and sharing what I learned with you guys. We're too young to talk about forever. Talk about the weather to know any better. I just want to laugh until I can't breathe. Midnight moonlight dancing, never get enough sleep. Colonial crafting video. Today I'm going to show you how to make something really sweet. Sweet bags, as we call them today, sachets. Come on, let's go. What you'll need for this craft is something to cover your workspace, an 8 by 8 inch of cotton cloth square, some dried ingredients. I'm using cloves, hibiscus, cinnamon, and a few others, and some pretty ribbon to tie it off. Some things that are optional are more than pestle or some scissors. And as always, the links to get all of these are down below. Time for the history lesson. Most colonial homes had an herb garden, and so the ladies of the house knew all about herbs and how to use them for illness and injuries. And of course, they were used for cooking as well. Even though my name is Sage, my favorite's rosemary. I like to put it in water, on steak, and well, I pretty much like to put it on everything. Most of these herb gardens were filled with herbs from Europe because that's what they mostly knew. As time went on, they did include plants native to North America as well. Colonists would also use these herbs to make what they called sweet bags. They would put these in the family's linen chest to make it smell good. I mean, does anybody want stinky sheets or clothes? No, no, no we do not. Step one, let's prepare our workspace. I like to lay everything out so that way I can see it all and decide what I want to put into each sachet. Some of the most widely used herbs at the time were rosemary, rose leaves, cloves, cinnamon, lavender, jasmine, things like that. Each has their own distinctive smell and some of them can overpower others. That's why you need to take a sniff before you add them. Step two. Lay the 8 by 8 square piece of cotton fabric down. We use cotton because it's thick enough to keep the small bits in, but it's porous enough to let the sweet smell out. Some colonists use silk. If you use silk, just know that it's a bit more expensive and it's a little slippery, so you may need help tying it at the end. Step 3. Add pinches of different smells. Today I'm using cloves. Cinnamon and a pinch of hibiscus. I'm also going to use a little bit of rosemary. If you've never done that before, smell it to make sure you like what you're creating. Here's where mortar and pestle can come in handy. If you grind the herbs, you can get a much stronger scent. Mm, smells like fall. Step four. Once you have a small handful of your herbs put in, take the points of your cloth, bring them together, and twist it so your ingredients don't fall out. Step five. Tie the ribbon around your sachet. I recommend having your ribbon already cut so that way you don't need a helper. Double knot it to make sure it's super tight. Because I'm pretty sure none of us want those bits flying out. Step six. Fluff it out a little bit on top. Test your scent. If you need to make it a little bit stronger, just pinch it a bit. <laughs> and you can also cut your ribbon. Now you can put your sweet bag in your linen closet, your sock drawer, or any other place that needs freshening up. If you want a more modern version, these organza bags work wonderfully. Just fill it up and pull it tight. 
hope you enjoyed making sweet bags with me. For more videos like this, go to This Family Blog's YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about stuff like this, come visit me on the blog. Let's go to thisfamilyblog.com. Thanks for watching!